I'm Kevin Rose. I'm a platform integration manager here at QSYS. Today we're taking a look at our integration with Microsoft Teams Room in a conference room setting like we have here. This system is using our NV32H in core mode. As you can see up here, the NV32H has some HDMI inputs, HDMI outputs, and it can be ran in one of three modes. It can be a video streaming encoder, a video streaming decoder, or in our case, it can be a 3 by 2 local switcher with a QSYS core built into it. We're using that. It's handling all our audio processing, our video processing, and our control processing in our Teams room. We have our NV32H connected to our content input on our Teams room compute, and then that's going up to our display, and it makes a really nice all-in-one solution. So we can see on our controller here, if I hit our second page experience button, we can load a QSYS user interface right on the Microsoft Teams room. This brings the power of QSYS control right into the Teams experience. We can do our basic video switching, and we can do some really nice things where if we go to a source that is not detected, the NV will automatically stop sharing video, turn off the HDMI output, and have the Teams stop presenting. We don't have to turn off auto present on the MTR. We're able to just automatically detect video sync. And when I reconnect my laptop, automatically restart our sharing. In cases where we have a source like a wireless presentation unit or a uh, room computer that always sends sync, we also have the ability to manually start and stop this. Now, this user interface we have right here on our Teams Room console, this is a QSYS UCI. Anything I can do in a QSYS UCI, anything I can control from QSYS control, I am able to put and present to the user here. So we're able to do things like control our environmental settings in our room, control our lighting, our shades, our HVAC. We can change our room layout. So if we have a room that is reconfigured, we're able to switch it back and forth between classroom mode and boardroom mode. Um, and we're able to do stuff even like summoning our help desk, which we'll get to in just a couple minutes. One of the really powerful areas where QSYS shines in a room like this is with our camera solution. All of our cameras, whether it be the NC110 here or one of our PTZs like I have up over my shoulder, uh, our network cameras. It stays a network stream from the camera across the network till it hits the endpoint. In our case, we're using the built-in IOUSB bridge on the NV32H, and we're using a separate IOUSB bridge for BYOD connectivity. We can run up to 250 cameras and 50 bridges in a design, and that allows us the flexibility to do multiple cameras to a Teams room system or be able to share those cameras. So in a larger divisible setting, I could have a four-way divisible room with a camera in each room, and each room's MTR is able to share the cameras amongst each other. There's no USB switching, no um, USB switching or any fancy um, stuff going on in the background. It's all just IP, so it's a very clean and elegant solution. We can control and switch our camera here but we can also make it available to BYOD. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my laptop. USB detected. And we'll see our room automatically detected our laptop and we switch to a user interface for BYOD. On our BYOD interface, we can see the laptop has the access to the same cameras our MTR had access to. I'm gonna go ahead and go into a Teams call here. And so we can see there's a lot of information we get in a BYOD environment from our just that single USB connection. We can tell, is the codec in a call? Is it ringing? Is it muted? And we can send answer, hang up, and mute, all with a driverless HID connection over our USB. What that allows is I can do things like mute the microphone either from the user interface or maybe I'm using our NMT1 microphone and I wave my hand over it. Not only does it mute locally in QSYS, but it muted in Teams. 
If I go and unmute in Teams, we see our cameras come out of privacy automatically and our system unmutes. So we're able to synchronize that mute status, not only with devices in the room, but also with our soft conferencing codec. And this works with all major platforms. We can do things like end our call. Leaving call. Call ending. Automatically. And because QSIS is acting as our audio, video, and control processor, we're able to take all that information we gather over the USB and do things like play audio prompts automatically. The last part we have here is we are going to have a user request help in our room. So user has issues with the temperature in the room. There's two things that happen when that user requested help. The first thing is the core sent a message to a Teams channel. We can see environmental assistance requested in meeting room two. This is uh, using the power of QSIS scripting, sending a Microsoft Teams webhook. This does not need a Teams room system to do this. I can do this from any core that's uh, running with a scripting license. On our Teams webhook, we see we have two options here. We can go to our system status page or we can load our user interfaces. Both of these are leveraging the power of Reflect Enterprise Manager to remotely through the cloud get me access to my system. I can be anywhere in the world and log in and diagnose what's going on on my system. And we can see here we have a compromised help desk status. When that user requested help, it changed the status of our core, which automatically triggered events to happen in Enterprise Manager. An email notification was sent out to users who've subscribed to that. If there were any API integrations bringing us into third-party monitoring solutions um, like ServiceNow or Splunk, it would automatically trigger that, and it's written to our event log. So we can see right here the user at 1038 requested help with environmental. That's very helpful to be able to see maybe the, uh, some issue that happened right here before it in our event log and be able to diagnose and see what's going on. Enterprise Manager also allows us the ability to remotely view the user interface in the room. So I can pull up and interact with the user interface and in real time I can see what the user sees on their touch panel and be able to control it. So I can close our camera controls, we can maybe route our video source, and it's in sync between the in-room and me remotely in the cloud. One of the cool advantages we have with Enterprise Manager and with how QSIS handles user interfaces is we don't need a piece of glass to send that user interface to the cloud. We can have a large number of user interfaces hosted on our core that are, do not have a corresponding panel in the room. In our case, we have an administrative user interface here. What this allows is a nice in-between step for a end-user level one support desk or even an integrator to be able to remotely come in and diagnose a lot of stuff going on in the system without having to open QSIS Designer. Now, if they had to go further, we can use the power of Enterprise Manager to actually remotely connect in, push a new design, modify a running design, and even push firmware to the core. So we can see here, we're able to see all the information on our video and we can get pretty deep on what we can see. We can see our video format, we can see if we have five volt, we can see if we have valid format, and I can even trigger a hot plug and virtually unplug and replug the HDMI cable from my laptop. We can remotely view and control the cameras in the room and be able to switch and recall presets. And then we can get into all the analytics we get over USB. So we have two different USB connections in our room. We can see, is our USB cable connected? Is the speakerphone in use? Is the camera in use? And what's the status of the soft conference? But we can take that a level even deeper and really start doing some nice automation. In our BYOD environment, we can read the computer's volume. If the user had their volume turned all the way down, our core will automatically turn the user's volume up by virtually holding down their volume up key. So that way, every user who walks into a meeting room has the same volume set, and it helps reduce help calls immensely. We can see our audio flow here. So I can see 
meters and status of my audio coming in. If a user had accidentally muted the mics, it's very easy for me to just come in and unmute our microphones. And once I've resolved their issue, I'm able to send them a response back to the touch panel so we can tell them their issue's been resolved. See touch screen for help desk comments. And we can now see on the touch panel our response back from the help desk as well as having that audio prompt play in the room.